Hi, today we're going to be talking about SAP Process Mining by Salonis as part of the overall process excellence methodology. Now we refer to process excellence, we're referring to the orchestration of people, processes and technologies to be able to achieve a defined outcome uh, and also to develop a culture of continuous improvement. Now this will then give you improved productivity, uh, reduced time to market, increased profitability. Uh, now, how does Slonis do this? It's, it's a data-based uh, discovery and visualization tool which provides an assessment of your as-is business processes. It does that by looking at uh, the digital footprint left by your business process, whether that's through logs, uh, or through change documents, or you know, just just the data in the in the database, um, and uncovers uh, any hidden inefficiencies or, or bottlenecks in your business processes. Once you've identified them, then you look at how you can improve them, whether that's through automation tools like workflow um, or RPA tools, for example. Uh, or integration tools. So we're trying to we're trying to remove any of those uh, manual processes and, and and timely processes. Okay. So that's that's the idea of SAP process mining by Salonis. Let's have a look now at how that performs in a demonstration. Okay. So Look now at the welcome page to Salonis. You can see a number of workspaces, and a workspace uh, denotes the data model that you're working with. So in this case, we're looking at the purchase to pay scenario, which is the purchase order line item level. And we're going to look at the process analytics, and we'll get to the others in a second. But if we look at the first, uh, the P2P scenario, we open that up, and this is going to go through and grab out all the data in that data model, so all of our purchase order line items and all of their follow-on documents and, and start to put them all together. Now, a number of these uh, views that you'll see have different kinds of analytics and we'll, we'll cover that off as well. You see the first page here is just the process overview and you see the start of the process and the end and the various steps that it goes through and the numbers denote the number of cases that went through that. Uh, in this case, we have 1.12 million purchase order items and a net order value. Now, this is the most common variant. So the most number of, of processes went through this path. And you see over here, we've got the first variant selected, which is the most common. We can extend that down to include the next most common, which is to go straight to creating the purchase order rather than through the purchase requisition which is fine, nothing wrong with that. Now, if we start to go a little bit further, you'll see that we have a, a change in price coming along and quite a lot go through that. Now, the numbers uh, are, are alarming enough, but if we change that view to look at the throughput time, so how many days it takes to get through that process, if it went through the normal path, it might take eight days. With a change in price, you're having an extra seven and 10. So basically an extra nine days on top of what you would have already had. Now, that is something you can investigate further. Why, why do we have to change so many prices? Is it that we're not getting the right prices from our vendors? Is there an integration error? Are, are we not uh, dealing with our vendors correctly? The other option we can do is to extend that down a bit further. And this is where it gets interesting you'll see some pretty crazy stuff happening here. Now we can click on that and animate the path so you can see it actually happening. It goes straight from the start to the scanning of the invoice. So the first thing that our organization knows about it is an invoice turns up. This is what they call Maverick buying and, and basically whoever's doing this is actually going around the purchasing department and going straight out and purchasing without going through purchasing department. Now that is what we would consider undesirable and can cause all sorts of trouble like you know you're not getting the right discounts you're not going through the proper procedures uh, buying things from vendors they shouldn't be buying from etc so we really need to weed that out so if we just restrict cases to that particular scenario we can we can filter the data model on that scenario okay ones that could run through this path now 
what we can do then is switch to another view which gives us a bit more information and we're still using that same path the maverick buying scenario that we talked about but what we can do now is look at the number of purchase order items per vendor and there's a couple of vendors that have quite a few of these scenarios but let's look at the net value and you can see there's one particular vendor if we click on that and click the green tick we filter that it adds it to our, our filter at the top and you can see that a lot of these happened in February so let's select that and we can again add that particular month to our filter criteria now the beauty of Salonis here is that it's actually working off the line item level so we actually have access to all of that data this isn't just working off an aggregate this is actually line item operational data so if we switch to our detail view <clears throat> you can see now we actually have all the line items here we can drill right down into the detail and again we can look at the net value and this particular order is substantially higher than all the rest so what you could do now is look at who created this purchase order why was it created uh, is it something to do with the vendor is it something to do with the, the particular person doing the purchasing um, because the numbers aren't particularly uh, unique there's quite a few high ones there but this one seems to be a lot higher now if that was an incorrect amount then you could assume that that's that'd be a big uh, cost saving if you could weed that out okay now we'll just clear those filters and go back to our overall data now when we look at our various processes we just looked at the first three there but if we extend that out to include all you'll start to see what a, a maze this thing can be and this isn't uh, unique to this data this is not um, exaggerated data by any means this is pretty common and you'll see a lot of these cases come up uh, we can drill right into that and, and see exactly what's going on but uh, this is not uh, dramatized in any way shape or form but when we start to see things like the price change for, as, as an example we look for options to correct them and things like automation so what can we do with a process um, that may speed it up and, and automating a process is certainly one of those ways so we can take manual steps out so when we create the purchase order a lot of the a lot of the time that's a manual process so if we could automate that through a workflow or through an RPA tool we could speed that process up and reduce that throughput time uh, dramatically okay uh, the other option we have is to take out things where there's rework involved uh, so again a change in price is considered rework because once you change it you've got to put it back through again okay so there's a lot of you can identify where those are coming through uh, another option we do is through what we call benchmarking so you can run um, the analysis for two different parts of the business and compare how they are tracking for things like automation or throughput time so we can compare this particular company code with this one and you can see that uh, this particular side of things the US Department is doing a lot better on their automation rates uh, in turn a much faster average throughput time now we talked on the, on the start there about the most common variant path what we can also do is to uh, utilize business process tools and map out the correct path import that model into Salonis and map that back to the processes that are happening in our system now once we have that mapped we can then say okay what is the level of conformance to that process and we can actually look at where those violations are and here we go change in price scanning invoices a starting activity which again was that maverick buying process so we can drill into that and perform a root cause analysis on it so this is utilizing the machine learning of Salonis to go through and identify the key criteria that keep coming up for these particular scenarios so the umbrella corporation as a vendor is going through this time and time again out of Chicago for bulbs and pack packaging materials so we can drill in find those cases 
weed them out, correct them, and start saving some significant money uh, in our processes. So that's the aim of Salonis, to actually get in there, understand what the processes are, and how we can correct them, streamline them, and ultimately save you time and money. Okay? So that's, that's my demonstration of Salonis uh, process analytics. Other options we have here is what we call the action engine. Now, when we talked about the automation of, of a business process, we want to look at uh, identifying scenarios that can be automated and sped up. So if we look at uh, selecting a department, credit limits as, a, as an example, we want to identify uh, cases in the order to cash scenario where customers have a good track record of paying their bills. We don't want to have to go away and manually adjust their credit rating if they're particularly you know, slightly above or below. We want it to do it automatically and Salonis can do that. It identifies those cases. If we drill into one here, we can see this customer has been paying their bills quite, quite well over the last uh, couple of months. So we can actually automate that to trigger a workflow process to adjust the credit limit. And it can go off to SAP Cloud Platform Workflow to do that. And the user would just get an alert in their inbox, tick the box and approves and away it goes, adjust the credit limit. The process continues. We're not going through uh, days of waiting for someone to adjust it manually. Uh, we're doing it through the workflow. Okay, So that's the action engine, a very handy tool. Uh, and you can expand that out to, to do all sorts of things. But it's based on uh, allowing Salonis to look at the data and learn from it uh, and adjust accordingly, utilizing external um, workflow tools like SAP Cloud Platform uh, Workflow and Business Rules. Okay, so that's the end of my demo today. Hopefully you've got something out of that. Um, if you need any more, any more information, please reach out uh, and let me know. Thanks.